Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is my season three of The Walking Dead, episode one, the premiere episode, you could call it. And uh, the title of this is called uh, something. I can't remember what it was called now, but uh, you probably know. I'll put it in the title. I think it will anyway. So here's my review. Okay, it was a pretty good episode. I'm not gonna lie, I came in with pretty low expectations because season two, in my opinion. Kinda, season one was pretty, pretty solid. A pretty solid TV show. Season two, in my opinion, for the most part, especially probably the majority, 80% of the episodes were pretty slow. A lot of drama that wasn't necessary, but this episode really got going. And, uh, if you haven't watched, I don't think I'm gonna have any spoilers yet. I'm just gonna keep on talking for a bit, so, but I will warn you when there's gonna be spoilers. So, actually, let's just get right to the spoilers right now, okay? If you haven't watched this, it's a good show. Um, go watch the episode. It's pretty good. They get the paces up. The pace is slow at times, but it's good. It all flows nicely. The soundtracks are good. The pacing's good. The acting's good. You get a well-rounded balance from all the characters. You get to see some new zombies, and, and that's about all I'm going to say. Go watch it. It's really good. Okay, moving into spoilers now, because it's, it's so hard to talk about a TV show without spoilers. Okay. Now, just a forewarning, I have never read the comics. Um, I played the video game, which is completely different, really. And uh, so I don't know what happens to these characters at this jail. I'm totally just, I'm, I'm freelancing at this. I'm guessing just as much as any of you are who haven't read the comics. So any of my theories are not facts, they're theories. And if you happen to know that maybe my theory is right or wrong, according to the comics, uh, please don't post and be like, this is what happens in the comics because I, I read the comics. Don't do that, okay? That would really ruin it for everyone. Um, uh, and hopefully, it seems like in some cases anyway, like with Otis from season two, they take a different direction in the, in the TV show, which it helps because even if it's spoiled, um, the audience watching the show is not necessarily ruined by reading something online that so-and-so dies in such and such a prison place or whatever. Anyway, moving on. Okay. So, first thing I got to address here, Lori being pregnant. Okay, and as soon as we found out that she was pregnant, uh, at least I did anyway, last season, I had this like, we. I think we all kind of put the connect, connect to the dots and said, what if the baby dies? What if she's, a, what if it's a stillbirth, you know? Um, what's going to happen? And I've, and I've thought about this in the, in the, couple months or whatever since it's been off or a year or whatever the zombie say it dies and it and say it just dies in her in her stomach um it doesn't have it doesn't have teeth i don't know it doesn't have teeth it doesn't have nails okay so it can't scratch it can't bite um it could uh it could uh, move its limbs and kick which would be very uncomfortable but uh it has no reason to do that really i guess it does kind of I don't know, um, but it's it's not really an immediate threat. It's not going to come ripping out of her stomach like a lot of people wanted to see Lori get ripped apart. So that's that's that addressed. We'll come back to that later. Um, uh oh, oh yes, very start of the episode. I was just I'm trying to read my my notes here. Carl, the little boy, pretty sure his name is Carl, has a really nice takedown in this uh, abandoned house that they're going through. At the very start. And uh, it's really, I was impressed, because usually when you see a little kid with a gun, uh, they hesitate, they don't shoot, zombie comes at them, someone shoots, someone else has to come in and save them, but Carl looked a zombie in the eye and popped him in the head. Like, I was like, wow, he didn't really hesitate at all. I was very impressed. I thought it was going to be one of those cheesy setups again where, oh, he doesn't know how to shoot the gun, he's too scared, but no, Carl, Carl's a man, okay? He's a man. Next thing, T Dog is talking. T Dog, he is using his vocal cords. He's yelling and screaming and and uh, getting very excited. And that's why you should be excited about this show if you haven't watched it already, which you should have if you're past this part. But uh, he's getting all excited, so I'm very excited for T Dog. He's one of my favorite characters so far, even though he's never said anything. I just he just he doesn't do anything wrong. He's just a good guy. He's, he's pleasant to watch on the screen. Okay, then they find the prison pretty cool prison. They've got like two outer rings of, of fences. Now what I think they should do with these fences is around them, they talked about digging a ditch actually to the creek so they could supply water in like a like an old castle. 
but they need to build like like a like not a moat but a, a an empty moat like so zombies fall into holes like around the prison okay just to add like because you don't want to have let's say you had a bunch of zombies come at a fence and somehow knock it over like i know there's you have two layers of fences but if you have holes in the ground maybe they'll you know catch 30 percent of the zombies that would help a lot anyway that's my opinion there's a lot of things that I was thinking through this episode that the characters ended up doing, so I was very happy with that. They weren't just being stupid. Uh, we got to see a little more of Daryl and Carol's romance, so it's not just... It's not our imaginations playing tricks on us. There is actually some... some, uh, some You could say flo foreplay or teasing and flirting and sporting going on there between the two of them. So uh, something to keep in mind, because Carol's uh, significantly older. She's at least in her late 40s. And Daryl's in his 30s, I would assume. So there's definitely an age gap there, but uh, it's the end of the world. So uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, then we got the blonde girl singing. She's a daughter of Herschel's, I believe. I believe. I couldn't find this online. I for this, it's it's difficult to find things online for these minor characters. Um, post in the comments if you know the girl. Uh, she did a good job singing, and Maggie helped her out. I think she's Maggie's sister, who's also uh, Herschel's daughter. One of the only ones that survived from that family. And uh, so that was nice. It was a nice little slow pace. You know, they did that initial clearing and all that stuff and, and of, the, of the outer ring. And they shot all the zombies inside with all the sniper rifles. And shot, they wasted a lot of bullets. Not wasted, but they, they expended a lot of bullets trying to take that, uh, that outer uh, fencing area there. And, oh man, I got so many things I got to say. I'm going to write that down for later. Um, I'm going to talk about that at the end. I just thought of something. Uh, okay, I'm gonna get that to the very end. Okay, uh, then they go into the inner circle of the uh, prison house, which is uh, it's just just outside the buildings, and they encounter some new zombies we haven't seen before, particularly the SWAT zombies, which were particularly cool because you could see them. They were like trying to. One of them took a crossbow right off the uh, his his uh, visor from Daryl, just bounced right off. Uh, they tried stabbing a couple of them, didn't do anything. Uh, Maggie eventually upper uppercutted one under the visor, and then they're like, "Oh, let's just do that." And then they all uppercutted, and uh, Daryl actually put one knife behind up his back, up at the back of his neck, and into his head, and so it took him out that way. So I thought that was cool. You got some uh, some different zombies and some SWAT zombies. And as I was watching this, I was thinking, dude, I've been saying, I've been thinking this since the very beginning of this this whole series. Okay. If I was in this situation, I would be running around in like hockey pads, okay, to protect against scratches because scratches infect just as much as bites, and they're they're more probable, I would say, because there's two arms and the, they have like a if you think of your two arms, they've got like a I don't know a six six cir uh, six six a six foot range or five foot range around you, whereas your mouth is is just in the center of that circle, so. Um, so you gotta watch out for scratches. I'm surprised more people don't get scratched. That's really, uh, I think, especially in that initial plowing there, someone should have got scratched. Like they took out probably, I don't know, 30 zombies and didn't lose anyone, didn't get a scratch, didn't get a bite. Uh, never even really got close to uh, being in danger. And uh, so yeah, SWAT zombies. Yeah, and as I was saying, they need to put this equipment on because you just, why take the risk? Like Maggie's running around in a tank top. A tank top, like, are you kidding me? One little scratch from a fingernail or something, and whoop, you're done. At your, the end of your life, it's not worth the risk. Put some armor on. Okay, then they get into the inside clearing, and I wrote down in my notes here that Daryl is so cool because Daryl is so cool in this whole episode. I just it just hit me at that point that his crossbowing and the way he was going around corners and whatever he was wearing, he looked like he was wearing some. Um, sweater, cool sweater thing, scarf, and uh, he was really cool. So I wrote that down because Daryl is probably the one of the fan favorites of this series so far. Uh, and, and I wrote down here that they should wear SWAT coats. Yep, I got I already got this all. I'm ahead of the game. Okay. Oh no, I forgot to research this part. Okay, then we switch back to Andrea, and I think her name's Michonne. I can't quite confirm that though. Um. You know who I mean, the African-American looking lady who wields the uh, samurai sword and has the two 
zombies attached to her her by chains. Uh, and I was wondering this whole time, like they were kind of, um, Andrea was stuck in this um, hunting thing, which is the name, the name of the episode is tied to the hunting thing. I remember it all. Um, and so I was wondering why is she sick? Because she wasn't sick in the end of episode two, or season two. Like, is she just malnourished from not getting enough food and I mean, she went for a good run there at the end of the at the end of the season, but she looked like she was just like ready to give up, you know. Like some of the some of the dialogue she was having too was like, "Oh, I'm not gonna make it. You're gonna die protecting me." Um, so Andrea and Michelle, we didn't really get to see very much of them. Uh, they kind of walked off into the into the sunset there at the end. So something to keep an eye on for sure. And. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. They they seem like interesting characters. I don't know why. I still don't understand why Michonne, or Machine or whatever her name is, uh, has these two zombies with her. Like I've heard, it's for protection, and that they have some. Uh, those those two zombies have some sort of a significance, like they're her ex boyfriends or something like that. But why? Like they're just to me, they just be a clumsy mess. Like they don't have arms. They trip over something. They fall down. They wouldn't be able to get back up. You have to go over there, pick them up. Like, just, just too many risks involved and not enough benefits, in my opinion. And and I don't know why they're not charging at Michonne this whole time. And, and like, why are they not running into Michonne trying to bite her, you know? They're stupid. They don't have arms and they don't have jaws, but they're so stupid they might think they do. So they go there and they try and run, 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 but they don't figure that out. Anyway, moving on. I'm starting to ramble here because I'm, I'm pretty, pretty excited about this episode. And, uh... So then, um, Laura and, uh, Herschel have a talk, because Herschel's kind of has a medical background about her baby, and she is concerned, like I talked about earlier, about having a zombie baby, and that's a very genuine concern. She's actually, she's still really annoying, though, like, she's like, everybody hurts me, well, hates me, hates me, everybody hates me, and it's just like, oh, really, why with all the drama again, you know, you just got this beautiful prison kind of beautiful prison, and you're gonna have a baby, you know, you should be thinking about the baby, and not being like, oh, everybody hates me, I'm gonna die, the baby's gonna die, I'm gonna eat everybody. Anyway, so my theory on this, of what's gonna happen, prediction, is, uh, the, that, my theory is basically this, the baby will be born normally, okay, She'll, the baby will survive, I think, actually, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even gonna say that yet, but I think it will, it could not, I, uh, I don't know, Okay, I'm going to say it's going to survive, okay? But my theory is this, my baby theory is this, that new life in this world is not infected. Um, I, don't, I don't really know how to uh, say it any more than that. It's uh, So anyone who has a baby in this new world, despite the parents both being infected, they are not infected because they weren't hit with, of course, we don't know what this what this virus was or this this radioactive whatever it was that spread to everybody but uh i feel like because they missed that first that 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 uh infection or that uh just that 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 spread of disease that they don't have it for some reason and that would be that's like the new that's gonna be like the hope of the season in my opinion and don't i wouldn't expect um her to have her baby anytime soon it probably won't be till like I don't know, the midpoint season or something like that. So keep that in mind. That's just my thoughts on that. If you have any thoughts on that, post them below in the comments. I love reading comments, and I will respond to your comments. I promise. Unless, well, no, I will. Even if it's really annoying. Okay. We're coming to the end here. Okay, another thing I gotta say about Daryl is uh, he does seem to have a bit of an infinite ammo thing going on here. Now, he, uh, he has been pretty good in the past about shooting his crossbow and uh, retrieving the bolt, the arrows. However, he just can't retrieve all of them. And it seems like he's fired that thing like 70 times. And I don't think that any normal crossbowman carries 70 crossbows or even 30 crossbows with them. They probably carry like 10. So I just think that he should have run out by run crossbows by now. And it's not like, it's not like bullets where you just walk into a, a, a house and find a gun with bullets. You know, not everyone has a crossbow with the perfect size crossbow tips and stuff sitting 
they're ready for you. Anyway, that's my thoughts on that. Bit of a Debbie Downer thing, but... Oh, and, and then at the end of this, okay. This is the... We're coming to the conclusion of this episode. I'm sorry, already over 15 minutes, I know, but I'm, I'm really, really feeling this episode right now. Okay, so we got... They're going through the, uh, the prison, and um, Herschel is going to find Maggie and Glenn, who got separated down in this little hallway, and we get this glimpse of the zombie, and I think all of us, when we were watching this this um, this uh, extermination and uh, and uh, expedition through the prison, we're looking at every zombie and saying, is that zombie, is its head destroyed, or is it gonna come up and get somebody? And this one zombie, its head wasn't destroyed, neither was its body, like, eaten to death. So, um, it looked pretty good. And, uh, of course, Daryl steps right in between, like, the, the crotchal area of the zombie. And the zombie, now, albeit, this zombie is a hacker, okay? Because that zombie was just sitting there, and all of a sudden he's like, Arr! he got, he, he, like, snaps his head down, like, as if he was, like, expecting, like, um, as if he was expecting Herschel to step there, and he was just like baiting him into it, like, "Oh, I know he's gonna step there." Like, no, no, these zombies don't think that well, and and more importantly, they don't move fast. They don't have fast twitch muscles, and he performed a fast twitch head grab of of his leg, and no zombie that I've seen has done a fast movement like that ever. So I, I'm calling hacks on that. I apologize to you, Herschel. You've now lost your leg because of it. You might get infected because of it. And you might die because of this. Because of this hack zombie. And I apologize because of that. And just after Rick cuts off his leg, okay, which is the very end of the episode, um, I, well, two things. Well, one thing, right now. I was immediately thinking of um, the Walking Dead game where... Lee Everett cuts off the um, the leg of the high school teacher, I believe he was, a Ben's high school teacher. That just, it was just so, so similar. I was like, man, they obviously knew what they were. They were in cahoots with that one. Okay, so that's that. Oh, two more things now. The survivors. So as soon as that's over, you see behind the group in another, behind a, a jailed wall, it looks like they're in like a kitchen or something. Uh, there's a uh, there's a group of what looked to be four or five, maybe six survivors. I didn't see any females. I just saw males. I just got a glimpse of them. And uh, so, what are these survivors? Are they governor? I don't. I've heard rumors of this governor thing. And well, I don't. I don't go looking for rumors. But you hear you read stupid comments from people. You're like, oh, the governor. I don't think this is governor. I think that governor is a is a uh, territorial group. Uh, that arises over top of the prison, like they're um, maybe they cover like a, a like a a neighborhood or a region in inside Georgia. N they're not. I don't think they're they're. Uh, I don't think they're prison based. These are just a group of prison mates who have survived. Now it's gonna be very interesting. I'm looking forward to meeting this group a lot actually because it's been a while since we've met anybody um, new or any. Any survivors? It's been like a full season since we've seen anyone really new. And I think so. I think so. So I'm really looking forward to that. That whole interaction of are they are they shy around them? Do they accept them? Do they merge groups or do they separate groups? Uh, how do the uh, the survivors like they're going to be the Rick's groups can be like, oh, where do you get the food from? And they'll be like, what food? There's no food or whatever. You know, how's the interaction going to happen? So that's very interesting. And my last comment, which I wrote down earlier. Um, when I was talking about how I was going to save it for later because I just thought of it, is uh, why didn't this survivor group hear all the shooting? I mean, they must have heard, okay? I'm going to presume they heard because they would have to hear. Like, they were popping off shots for probably what would have been real life uh, five, ten minutes, maybe 20, okay? So they were popping off a lot of shots. Like, that's, and that's pretty close to you. I'm sure... I don't know, because, but they also looked so surprised when they when they met these when when they met Rick's group. So I don't know if they heard them. I don't. know. I'm confused on that. Anyway, I don't think they heard them actually. They should have heard them, but they didn't. And that's it. Sorry, guys. It's 20 minutes long. Oh my goodness. 
I'm sorry. But uh, that's my review of The Walking Dead Season 3, Episode 1. It's very good. Go watch it. Go comment below. And uh, let's get a discussion going on something. And thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.